Hi, my name is Andrew Arroyo and the Cornell Mars Rover team is excited to unveil this year's rover, Artemis. Our team is split up into six different sub-teams organized by discipline. The TAS sub-team is responsible for developing the rover's robotic arm and drill. The drive sub-team oversees the development of the rover's suspension, wheels, frame, and electronic housing. The electrical sub-team is responsible for all electrical components, including the rover's communication systems and embedded firmware. The software sub-team operates rover controls and designs the autonomous systems. The science sub-team oversees Martian and MDRS research and develops the mechanism for onboard testing in the science task. And finally, the business sub-team is in charge of team finances, web and presentation designs, and both public and sponsor outreach. The academic year is divided into three phases. A development phase from August to November, a manufacturing phase from November to early February, and a testing phase from February to May. This year, we have worked hard to finish the rover early to maximize testing time and deliver a more reliable rover than ever before. Based on our performance in last year's competition, we have improved Artemis's drive system. We switched to brushless DC motors to get better performance and to reduce size and weight. We redesigned the tread system on the wheelie's tires and optimized the profile of the Ultim wheel frame. Artemis's suspension now features viscous dampers to improve vehicle dynamics and handling during the extreme retrieval and delivery mission. The box frame is more compact and lighter than last year's. On the back sits a new carbon fiber composite mast to give us a better vantage point for the main drive camera and to give communication system a better line of sight, key for maintaining full bandwidth during ERDM. The rover has a belt-driven base which minimizes the joint's backlash. The shoulder is stiffer, smaller, and lighter than last year's, reducing flex throughout the arm. The wrist is a compact joint with three degrees of freedom, which provides the dexterity needed to succeed in the equipment servicing task. The final joint on the wrist provides continuous rotation using a slip ring for power in conjunction with wireless links for control and camera feeds. We optimize the end effector to ensure it can easily pick up objects, push buttons, flip switches, turn knobs, open drawers, undo latches, use a wrench, and type on a keyboard. We have also made the end effector compatible with two screwdrivers, one hex and one Phillips, which are mounted to the frame so they can be picked up in the correct orientation. Our software system utilizes the robot operating system running on an NVIDIA Jetson TX2. It allows for teleoperation, configuration of camera feeds, as well as other operations to use throughout the different missions. During the equipment servicing mission, Artemis will use inverse kinematics to make complex movements easier to perform. During the autonomous traversal mission, we use a GPS system, magnetic compass, and inertial measurements to navigate towards the given GPS coordinates while relying on the LiDAR to avoid obstacles. The rover uses computer vision to detect the tennis ball. The Jetson communicates with the base station via a 2.4 GHz transceiver and a 900 MHz transceiver with omnidirectional antennas. We aggregate the two transceiver links into one fault-tolerant channel that allows for communication even when line of sight is obstructed. Low-level control of motors and sensors is provided by PIC32 microcontrollers acting as a distributed network connected by a CAN bus. A central communication board provides the Jetson access to the network via a UART connection. The distributed network provides flexibility and redundancy by allowing boards to be added, removed, and replaced freely. The soil collection system has been redesigned to collect soil using an auger and transport it to the top of the rover using a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt feeds the soil into the automatic regolith testing system. The testing system contains 36 individual soil banks filled with water in a carousel-like arrangement, six boxes for each of the six sites. A cam drive system oscillates the carousel allowing for flocculation of the soil and water. After flocculation, chemical reactants are released into the sample containers to react with nutrients and organic compounds. Qualitative color changes observed through a camera determine the presence or absence of traces of organic life. To analyze rocks, we designed a 3D printed wheel with five slots that limit the passing of light to certain visible light wavelength ranges. Artemis takes pictures of the rocks through these filters, which, based on the average reflectance values, allow us to determine the rock's mineral composition. With a focus on reliability, we have a rigorous testing plan. The team is divided into four testing teams, one for each of the URC missions. Towards the end of the semester, we put both the rover and the competition team through two mock competitions. Artemis and the rest of the team are just about ready for competition and we hope to see you in Utah.